So welcome back to Ryan's Garage. This week, we're not actually working in the garage, we'll be working outside of the garage. See, when you're gonna go racing, you need two things. You need a race car, check. But you also need a race car trailer and a way to tow that trailer to the racetrack. So come with me, if you will, as we walk outside. Hopefully the sun glare is not too terrible. And as you can see, here's my RV. And that's the trailer, that's the garage door. And here's my trailer. So what's today's adventure gonna be? Well, it's time to service the brakes on this trailer. They're in bad shape. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do trailer brakes. Stick around. Okay, so there you can see my drum and brake assembly. Now these trailer brakes are electric. They are not hydraulic, meaning that there are no hydraulic lines running to the back of this trailer. So the first step is to remove the grease dust cap. Put that to the side. Now, under the cap, this is an extremely greasy, dirty job. I hate doing this, but it has to be done. A little retainer clip. I hope you can see this. All right, holds the nut from backing off. Let me take the nut off. As you can see, it's quite disgusting. Ugh. Uh oh, sorry. Hang on. Let me fix you. Didn't mean to whack you. There we go. Again, so we can do this without violence. All right, so we take the nut off the spindle. All right, now we give the drum a little pop, and we have two sets of bearings. We have a, an outer bearing and a washer, disgustingly greasy. Put that in the dust cap for now. We're going to wash these bearings and service them as well. We pull off the drum, and as you can see, it looks a little different. So what you have going on here is a electromagnet, when it's energized, the wheel spins this way, going down the road. When it's energized, it hooks onto the drum, and it pulls this way, and causes the brakes to apply, all right? These brakes have seen better days. They're all cracked, they're all nasty, they're just worn the hell out. So we're gonna change them, all right? Stick around and I'll show you some more fun. So we could go out and, we could go out and replace just the shoes if we wanted to here and here, but for a little bit more money, you get everything. Shoes, springs, there's a return spring down under here, the magnet, you get everything included. So why not replace it all? So let's do that. I'll show you what I mean. Hopefully the camera doesn't move too much. We have five nuts here. That we just Oh, it's being difficult. So what you do is you take your extension off. Go with that extension. And this little stubborn bolt comes off. Look at that. Oh, she's warm. Okay. Put my hardware down so I don't lose it. Nothing worse than losing hardware in a rock driveway. Pull the vacuum plate off. There's a little zip tie back here. We'll cut that to give me a little bit more wire. Okay, drag it down like this. Cut the wires. And we will replace the whole damn thing. All right? Okay, so this is the backing plate for the new drum assembly. You can see it right here. All shiny new springs, new backing plates, new magnet. Everything's good to go. All we got to do now is attach these two wires to these two wires right there, and we will be good to go. So watch this. Let's use the magic of television. I hope you can see this. All we do is we give it a little splice, a little strip the ends off like this, and like this. All right. Give it a twist. Here's a tech tip for you. When you're using butt connectors, put the butt connector in the tool like that, and then put the wire in the butt connector. Makes it a lot easier. All right. Get in there, you dirty. Okay. 
Come on. There we go. All right. Now, all you gotta do is heat those up and they will seal themselves. And I can barely see. Sorry about that. All I gotta do now is just heat up these two little connectors right there and it'll be a great fit, great uh, great connection. We'll replace the bungee cord or the uh, zip tie that was holding it to the chassis and we'll be good to go. Sit tight. All right, so we take my little flamethrower here. Now the object here is to heat it, not burn it. You wanna heat these things, they, they have shrink wrap on them. So it will be a weather tight seal and just be lovely. Last thing you want to worry about when you're going to the track is, will my trailer stop? I don't know. Let's hit the brakes and find out. Not a good place to be in. All right, you don't want to be doing that when you're towing about 9,000 pounds of race car and race car parts and goodness in the trailer. Okay, so that's done. The wiring is finished. Now, let's put it back on, on the trailer. Get you the right angle here. Okay, you can see my spindle. Okay. We got a problem. Let me see. Back it off a little bit. Those threads are not happy. Next time I'll be putting the new one in that one. All right, everything's tight. Okay, next up, we gotta service the bearing. So let's go service some bearings. So there are many things in this world that I don't like. Lima beans is one. I hate lima beans, gross. Democrats, lately, I don't like Democrats. They're ruining our country. And another thing that I really can't stand is greasy, disgusting wheel bearings. These wheel bearings now have to be removed and cleaned and repacked with grease. It is gross. Sit tight and we'll get it cleaned up. The first step to getting these seals or these bearings uh, reserviced is I gotta get the seal out of the drum. There's a seal in the back of the drum and all I gotta do is pop it out. Just pop it out, piece of cake. Greasy seal. One greasy, disgusting bearing. This is gross. But it's got to be clean. We cannot have it stay like this. So we'll take this thing over here. We'll plop it down ugh, with the other one. All right, now we got to get the rest of the grease out of the drum. Now this is gross. This is like wiping a baby's ass that has diarrhea and it won't stop coming out as you're trying to clean his bottom. People who have children, you know my pain. Disgusting. Just, we'll just put that there for us to enjoy later. I will go through probably half a roll of these paper towels. It's something you should have in your shop, by the way. Paper towels. Awesome. All right, let me just put this camera down here so I can two-hand this sucker. All right, stay there. You got to get all the grease out. No grease left behind. What I do is I just do a, a swirling motion and just push the grease out the other side like that. It's gross. It's nasty. But to service it properly, it's got to be done. It's one of those things that's just got to be done. It's like okay, paying taxes. You just have to do it. Oh, well, you don't. You just don't have to do it. You could always just not pay taxes. What are you going to do? Arrest you? <laughs> Stop it. All right. So, that's just about good. You clean up the poop on the bench here. Okay, now, that's clean. Let me throw this out. There's really no need to hang it around. 
time with it. Okay. Get a fresh paper towel here. I hope you can see this. I hope the camera's not pointing at the bench and you can't see what the hell I'm doing. That looks good. Okay. Get my hands somewhat clean. Get a little more good wipe. Wiping. You want it to be clean. Now you can't put this in the parts washer because the solvent from the parts washer will get into the drum and it'll cause problems. Now, inside where the bearings ride, this right here is called the bearing race. Okay? You want to inspect the bearing race. And as you see, it looks pretty good. There's no pits on it. There's no rust, it's not cracked, it's not, I don't know, lumpy, for lack, of le for lack of better words. It looks pretty good, okay? Now, we talked about how the drum brakes work on a trailer. You can see the scratch marks from where the magnet actually grabs the drum, all right? And then this is just glazed over from the shoes riding on it. That's pretty much what it looks like on the inside, okay? Let's head over to the parts washer and wash bearings. Oh, one of my favorite things. Let me see if I can get you a seat here where you can see what the heck's going on. I don't know if I can pull that off. All right, now, turn on our parts washer. We'll start with the big gross bearing. Okay, now what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to give it a wipe. Because I don't want all that grease in my parts washer if I can avoid it. So I'm going to wipe it off first. Get as much of it off as I can before we go in the parts washer. All right, so I wiped most of the grease off of the bearing. Now the object is to get all of the grease off the bearing. You wanna make sure these things are completely clean. I like to actually just take the nozzle of the parts washer and stick it in the big side of the bearing and try to force all the grease out. You roll the rollers, wipe it clean. Roll the rollers, wipe it clean. Back under the solvent, roll the rollers and wipe it clean. Okay. It takes a few minutes to get all the grease out of it, but it's really important that all the grease comes out of that bearing. You don't want any old grease left behind, all right? All of it out. Make sure it's perfectly clean and spotless. Then when you're done that, you'll squirt it down with some brake clean to make sure it's completely dry. You don't want any of the old solvent left on it. Some guys will blow it off with a blow nozzle. Yeah, you can do that if you want, just as long as you don't spin it. Myself, I just like to hit it with some brake clean to wash, out the, wash off the solvent and stick it on a paper towel and let it sit. Okay, now see as I roll the bearing, as I roll the rollers, grease is coming through there. That means that I missed some, all right? And you can hear the rollers rolling around in my thumb. So after I get all the grease out, I want to inspect the rollers, okay? Let me get one more shot, one more run around here. Okay, shake it off, you get a good shot of that. I want, to, I want the rollers to be nice and clean, no pitting. I want to actually roll them around and it should be smooth. There goes the compressor on again. All right, a couple more bits of grease on there, little bits. We have my daughter Reese on the camera today helping out. Say hello, Reese. No. Okay, or not, she's very defiant, my daughter. Hopefully we'll see her at the track this year, right, Reese? Maybe. That's our goal. All right. So you can see the bearing. Now, if you notice on the back of the bearing, there's numbers. Can you see those numbers? If you're not sure, for example, this is a China, Wuhan. This is a Hallmark trailer, but Hallmark doesn't make the bearings. So if I needed to get a new bearing for this trailer, I would simply tell them the bearing number is 25580, and they can then match me up another bearing. All right? I think that's pretty good. Give it a shake. Yeah, that looks nice and clean now. Okay, I don't see any more grease popping out of there. All right, now. Get right there. Last little thing we do. Close it down with some brake clean. Brake clean dries dry, unlike solvent, which will dry oily. So it's part of the brake clean. On to the next one. And now we'll do the small bearing. Same thing. Get it in there, get all the grease off of it. You can see it's getting a little cleaner. I like to try to get the bristles of the brush in the rollers.
as you can see, this has a couple parts to the to the uh, bearing. You have the inner race, you have the actual cone rollers here, and then you have the cage that hold the rollers in place. You want to make sure that the cage isn't smashed, uh, that it's not broken or chipped or cracked, and it all looks good. This trailer is not exactly brand new. I think it's an 04, maybe. I think it's an 04, maybe even older than that. Um, it's got some miles on it, but this is, the, believe it or not, this is the first time the bearings have ever been serviced. <gasps> How can that be? Well, because it is. Okay, give it a shake. Give it a roll. Looking on the inside. Again, another number on the bearing. It's in here somewhere. Where the hell is it? It's there. It's a little bit tough to read because this bearing's on the outer edge, so it's got some tarnishing to it. But there's always bearings on the back side. And they'll give you, when you replace the bearing, you replace the bearing and the race, not just the bearing. Always put a race on it too. Have some brake clean. <laughs> nice and clean. Oops, sorry. So I keep, I keep the camera still, Reese. Nice and clean. All right, next up, we'll do the, uh, the hardware with it. If you're gonna clean it, you might as well clean everything, right? So that way when you put it all back together, everything is clean. Clean the nut, get the grease out of the threads. Make sure that that's not cracked or chipped or anything like that, and it looks good. The washer, which is in the parts washer, get all the grease off the washer. We don't want to have a greasy washer. W U S S H E R, I believe is how you spell that. Washer. All right, again, looks good. Nothing really wrong with that. And then finally the clip. This clip keeps the nut from backing off. And if the nut backs off, then your wheel seems to find a new place to stay. It doesn't stay on the trailer anymore. And that's not a good thing. We don't want that to happen. That'll just ruin our day. Right, Reese? Sure. Yep, see, she knows. You can't go to the track if you don't have your trailer wheels. All right. Whoop, missed the spot. Everything's nice and clean. Kinda. Ooh, hate bearing grease. I hate bearing grease. I hate it. Alright. Now, next, last thing to clean is the grease cap. Now before I stick this in there, I'm gonna take all back up. I'm gonna take all of the grease out of the grease cap and throw it in the trash. Alright? I don't want to contaminate my my walk my solid tank with dirty grease, if I can. At least it, to a minimum, keep it to a minimum. All right, now we'll clean out the, the grease cap. The dirt, the dust cap is considered. Now trailers have something that's a bit unique about their grease caps and their, and their spindles. On the end of the spindle is a grease fitting. You can take that rubber cap off right there and behind it, it will be a grease fitting. I have a grease gun with, with bearing grease in it, and I will grease, there it is, it's kind of ripped. I will grease the trailer bearings with a grease gun. So you don't have to do this all the time, but it's a good idea to take the grease gun and pump some grease into your bearings, especially if, before you go on a road on a long trip. Now this is goes, this holds true for all bearings on a trailer. Whether it's a race car or an RV or a camper or a boat trailer, you want to keep those bearings nice and lubricated, especially on a boat trailer that goes into the water. All right, all right. Parts are clean. Let's go pack some bearings. You good? Okay, so here's all of our bearings and our races and our clips and caps and all that crap. Now what we gotta do is we gotta get grease inside the bearing. Now you could take a lump of grease in your hand and sit here and do this and force the grease through, but I don't have time for that, okay? I've got bronchitis. So what we do is we take a bearing packer, take the bearing, put it in the packer, squeeze said packer, there we go. And you can see the grease that comes through the bearing. See that? So that bearing is packed with grease. Now what I like to do is take that extra here and just kind of rub it on the outside of it to make sure that it's got a good coating of grease on it. Like I said, too much grease isn't a bad thing when it comes to the wheel bearing. All right, that's clean, greased, and ready to go back in. Now we'll do the little one. We'll do the little guy. But before we do that, uh, come with me. You take the excess grease and come with me. 
I like to throw the grease inside the drum on the race. So I'll just kind of ease it in there. Like that. Disgusting. So gross. I hate packing bearings. It is disgusting. It's like having poop on my hands. All right, let me get some more. Stay right there. <laughs> And we'll put the rest of it in there. When you put the little bearing in there, there's not a lot of leftover grease on like the big bearing. So I like to make sure that that grease gets inside the spindle and it's well lubricated. Okay. So you can see all the grease in there. All right, come on. Let's come back over here. Let's pack that little bearing. Little bearing into the packer it goes, like so. Squeeze it down. You should have a pairing packer in your toolbox. If you don't, why not? It's a great tool to have. Again, we just put that excess grease on the outside of the, of the cage here. All right. Now the bearing is ready to go. When you're done with your bearing packer, go like this, and you put the cap on it. Keep the grease out, or keep the dirt out of your bearing packer, okay? Now, we have to put the bearings back into the drums as I wipe off more poop off my hands. It looks like peanut butter. It looks gross. Okay, come with me. <clears throat> okay, so we gotta put the bearing back in the drum. What I like to do is drop it in onto the race and seat it and then take the excess grease, stick it on the inside of the bearing like that. So that way we know that the bearing has plenty of grease in there. Because as the bearing heats up, that grease will liquefy a little bit. And it'll actually flow in and out of that bearing. So we want to keep that bearing well lubricated. Okay, now next trick. We've got to put in the seal. This is a bearing seal. Okay, now you'll notice on the bearing seal, right in there is a spring. Okay, when we beat this seal into that drum, we don't want that spring to pop out. So what we'll do is we'll take some grease. Like this. And we'll put a little grease here. I'll put a little grease there. Usually I'll pack the whole thing with grease, but it's really not necessary. The grease will keep the spring from popping out. The worst thing you can have happen is that spring pops out and then gets wound up in the back of that bearing and it's a disaster. So now we take the seal, put it on the drum like that. To install the seal, you'll use this, a seal installer. It's actually a race and seal installer. This side installs races you can use this side backwards to install install a seal. Flip it over backwards, get the, sign, the driver that's the same size as the seal, and then simply tap it in. One more, for good measure. Done. That drum is ready to go back on. All right? Good. Okay, so we're back outside at the trailer. The bearings are all packed and ready to go. The brake shoes are installed and ready to go. Let's get this wire. A little better. I don't really like if it's laying there like that. I guess that's as good as it's gonna get. All right, now we put the drum back on the spindle. Get on there, you dirty mother. There it goes. Okay. We push it on and seat that inner bearing. Now the order is a little extra bearing grease in here. I like to have these things, like I said, very well glued. So we squirt a little bearing grease on here. So that way the outer bearing has plenty of grease in it, okay? We take the outer bearing first. That goes in. Uh-oh, there it goes, come on. It gets seated on, oh, hello. Seated on the spindle. Worsher, W-U-S-S-H-E-R, Worsher. Nut. I think I did. What a dope. And now you are? You know what happens, you know? I had a Biden moment there. What are you going to do? Good. All right, so now I went in and grabbed the tools that I forgot to bring out. So what you want to do is you want to, there's a certain way to tighten this nut up. You don't just ram it tight and forget about it, okay? You literally have to seat the bearing. So you spin the drum and you tighten the hell out of the, out of the nut like that, okay? Give it a spin. Now you're gonna back it off. You'll feel it release, and then you're gonna snug it down until it just gets tight, okay? You want this nut to be tight enough that 
doesn't have any wobble in the drum, but you don't want it so tight that it burns out the bearings. Now this little clip here has a flat that sits in here like this and it holds the nut in place. A little bit off on that. Come on, let me set that. Just a little bit off there. There we go. There it is. Okay. Now after that, last thing cup put your grease fitting your grease cup on there tap it on like that she's ready to go done trailer brakes one